Greetings, zombie killers. Dead Island 2 is out now, so we thought we'd share five helpful tips to make the task of dealing with zombies and surviving the many perils of Hell A a little easier. Let's go. Tip numero uno, pick a slayer that suits you best. Any good zombie hunter knows that the character they choose to play as needs to resonate with their personality and unique playstyle. In Dead Island 2, there are six different slayers to choose from, namely Amy, Carla, Bruno, Danny, Ryan, and Jacob. Each of these characters has their own innate abilities as well as different attributes in which they excel or aren't so great. For example, Amy is high on critical damage and agility, but low on health and even lower on toughness. In contrast, Carla is super tough and resilient, but has little agility and close to no critical damage. Admittedly, this isn't a new mechanic in gaming, but it does allow you to customize your experience and take on threats according to your own personal preferences. You may need to experiment a little here and figure out which slayer or slayers are the best for you. But in the end, as long as you can avoid taking too much damage or can clear an area of Zeds in record time, I have a feeling you may just make it through. Just don't get too drunk on spilling zombie guts. Tip number two, know thy enemy. Sure, there's plenty of garden variety zombies that you can easily dispatch with a swift machete swing to the head or a hammer to the face, but many of the undead you'll encounter in Dead Island 2 are anything but standard. For this reason, it's a good idea to learn a little about some of these more threatening types so you don't get caught with your pants down in a fight. More specialized infected in Dead Island 2 include butchers, crushers, screamers, mutators, slobbers, suiciders, and runners. The most dangerous of these, at least according to the Dead Island Wiki, are the Screamer, Crusher, and Slobber, more or less in order from most to least dangerous. The reason Screamers are so dangerous is that when they get within range and shriek at you, they prevent you from attacking, so this leaves you open to attack from any other zombies in the area. Best bet with these infected is to use a grenade or molotov since headshots aren't really effective with them. Then with crushers, you just need to keep away from them as they deal a lot of damage with their powerful muscled arms. The best way to deal with them is to simply remove their arms, preventing them from dealing any further damage. Lastly, the slobber spews acid at you, so keep well back and consider using a grenade or molotov to dispatch them more effectively. Oh, before I forget, later on in the game you'll encounter mutators which are pretty formidable and act like mini-bosses in their own right. Try to stay close to them as being far away will leave you susceptible to their ranged attacks which are pretty devastating. You've been warned. These obviously aren't hard and fast rules, so when in doubt, you can always try to get out of range and use the environment to your advantage. Infected aren't too smart, so outwitting them by being a little clever with your approach will give you more than a fair advantage over your enemies. At the end of the day, as long as you keep your cool and don't panic, you should be able to navigate most encounters and come out relatively unscathed. Tip number three, know thy arsenal. Getting to grips both literally and figuratively with the tools of the trade is absolutely necessary in Dead Island 2. The focus here is on close quarters combat, but there are obviously revolvers, shotguns and assault rifles as well if you prefer riddling walkers with bullets over beating them to death. It pretty much goes without saying that certain weapons work better in certain scenarios or with specific zombie types than others, but when in doubt, try to find a way to make things, and zombies, go BOOM. Naturally, you can use grenades, molotovs and other types of explosive weapons to achieve this, but also be sure to survey the environment for any opportunities that may lead to a chain reaction and a lot of dead zeds for little to no real effort. Missing these serendipitous pieces of good fortune will just make your life more difficult, and you'll have to use more bullets and get your hands dirtier too. But hey, maybe you like that sort of thing. I would also recommend getting pretty competent at crafting so that you can upgrade weapons and deliver more effective attacks to your enemies. Just think of all the amazing blunt force trauma you'll be able to inflict with a turbocharged baseball bat. Truly glorious, friends. Tip number four, master the skill card system. In Dead Island 2, if you literally play your cards right, you'll have a much easier time when it comes to dealing with enemies and fulfilling objectives. Skill cards provide your character with certain boosts or bonuses that you can use to make your playthrough significantly easier. Cards are divided into four different categories, namely Abilities, Survivor, Slayer, and Newman. Abilities cards can only be unlocked by completing main story quests and generally augment your character's combat abilities. Survivor cards boost certain stats and grant passive abilities like being able to heal yourself over time. Slayer cards will make certain types of attacks more powerful Powerful or grant you bonuses for performing a specific move related to the card in question. Finally, Newman cards grant you zombie-like abilities such as being able to spit acid like a slobber, for example. The great thing about the skill card system is that you can mix and match cards at any time so that you don't ever have to stick to one playstyle, unless you want to, of course. Mastering this system means that you'll be able to get through encounters with zombies more rapidly, or at the very least make it through even the toughest of challenges. Take the time to familiarize yourself with this system, and if you're experiencing some difficulty with a certain section, just try mixing up your cards a bit. You may just be blown away by the results. And last but not least, tip number five, give co-op a whirl. What's better than killing zombies on your own? Killing them with others, of course. 
So co-op mode in Dead Island 2 is limited to three players, which many people in the community have criticized. But according to the devs, they went through extensive testing and determined that the ideal mix of players is actually three. In essence, the level of difficulty and combat dynamics just seem to work best with three players, but whether people in the community agree with this or not remains to be seen. Co-op mode unlocks once you reach Emma's mansion during the Call the Cavalry mission, so more or less 20 to 30 minutes into the game. Sadly, co-op in Dead Island 2 isn't cross-play, but it is cross-gen, meaning PS5 players can partner up with others playing on PS4, or Xbox Series XS owners can play with those playing on Xbox One. I think you get the idea. Also, since co-op uses peer-to-peer, -peer, right now only latest generation console owners can actually host games. The devs are supposedly working on a fix for this so anyone can host, but if and when this will happen, I'm not too sure. Unfortunately, co-op does feel a little underwhelming and probably won't be possible for many players, but for those of you who are able, be sure to give it a try when you can. So that's basically all I have to say. What did you think of these 5 tips? Are they actually helpful? Or do you have some better tips for those who are just starting out with Dead Island 2? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep delivering hot gaming VR and tech content to you on a regular basis. That's all for now. From me and the crushers here at Metasquad, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Later!